Welcome to the Security Mentality course. I'm Josh Bressers, a member of the Red Hat product security team. The focus of this course is to introduce the listener to the mindset of a security professional and highlight how they're different from most software developers. The final major aspect is security knowledge, or the underlying facts and principles that are relied upon by those with the security mentality. Knowledge within the security mentality consists of two major pieces. The first piece of knowledge is that of innovation. To be innovative, one must first understand recent trends, beliefs, and their motivations. These are the foundation of innovation and are used in reasoning to help infer creative approaches to problems. The second important part of security knowledge is engineering. Engineering knowledge allows for the discovery and deep understanding of how and why something works. Now let's test our security mentality. On the left, there's an ordinary can of Pringles. To many, you see this as just a container for Pringles, or maybe even a container that could be reused to hold other objects, such as pencils. Using our engineering knowledge, we see that this can has several unique attributes, such as its tall, cylindrical shape. It may look similar to a directional antenna. So why not use it as an antenna to increase our wireless range? Let's look at another example that combines innovation and creative problem solving. How many of you have ever used or seen these types of round locks? You can typically find them being used to secure bicycles, laptops, and other containers. Here's the situation. You need to open a round lock, but don't have the key. What do you do? Cut the lock? Drill it out? Pay a professional to open it? Someone used their security mentality to realize that there's another solution. Instead of focusing on the lock, they focused on the key. How can you craft a key to open the lock? Well, they used an object which most of you should be familiar with, a normal, everyday pen. This person used lateral thinking to realize the circumference of the tube of the pen is the same as a large number of the round locks. Examining the construction of the lock, it requires only a properly shaped key with a simple notch to activate the unlock mechanism. This unlocking mechanism can be activated with the addition of a paperclip. You may now be asking yourself, why didn't anyone realize this while the locks were being designed or manufactured? The short answer is because it was never considered. Since the lock and pen are never conceptually related, it was never considered that a pen could be used as a key. Though I'm sure that numerous other lock picking tools and techniques were tested. This oversight is an example of one of the biases that those with the security mentality often leverage. Now, let's examine some such biases and how they can cause security issues. These biases are innate in many developers and other critical thinkers and are difficult to realize and overcome. It's our hope that by bringing to your attention such biases, you may become more cognizant of such oversights when coding and testing. The basic premise of these insecurity biases is highlighted in what is referred to as Schneier's Law, and named after the cryptography and security guru, Bruce Schneier. Schneier's Law states that any person can invent a security system so clever that he or she can't imagine a way of breaking it. In other words, when it comes to security, a single individual is limited to their own creativity and biases. To build something securely, you must be able to identify all of the system's vulnerabilities and design security measures for each. Since we're focusing on software development, I'll offer a corollary. Any developer can build an application so secure that he or she cannot exploit it. This exemplifies the three largest security missteps of software development. Number one, many developers try to do security by themselves. Number two, developers are too attached to the code. They tend to see it for what they want it to be instead of what it is. Number three, developers are biased by their knowledge in what has been done before. They don't think of unique ways their software can be used or abused. Thus, they are incapable of thinking of new ways to exploit it. Imagine that instead of building an application, you're designing and building a safe. The safe will have all of the latest and best security features and be impossible to crack. You go about designing and tweaking, and finally, you send your safe into production. Here's what you end up with. A safe with a secure door and lock, but the remainder is literally Swiss cheese. The problem, you are too focused on certain criteria and too passionate about your creation to see and mitigate all of its flaws. So why does this happen? The simple answer is that you're biased. Functionally, 
you met all of the functionality requirements and quality assessment goals. The safe properly locks and unlocks, check. Functioning combination lock, check. Innovative features, check. Immune to past safe cracking attempts, yup, it passed all the tests you could think of. So shouldn't quality assurance testing find this stuff? Well, yes and no. The focus of quality assurance is to verify a program's documented and expected functionality that can be written as testable requirements. That is usually further limited to prioritize for the typical program interaction expected to be performed by a majority of users. Security professionals, on the other hand, look where QA has not. They tend to focus on things like underused or undocumented functionality and erroneous or atypical user interactions. So the developers and quality assurance engineers didn't find the security risks. Why might that be? As an individual, there is so much working against you when it comes to security. Your biases cause you to focus solely on an idea's strengths while inadvertently ignoring its weaknesses. This effect gets worse the closer one is to the design and development of the idea. Your thoughts are constrained and limited to yourself and your experiences. No individual can identify every security risk. However, we can do better at understanding our psyche and conventional biases. From there, we can use our shared knowledge to put in place better recommendations and practices to counter these insecure tendencies. The solution to counteract such insecure biases is to not do security alone. Instead, rely on an external squad for security. Individually, developers must understand and adopt the security mentality. Develop security knowledge. Work to fully understand the code and application platform. Know any application dependencies and assumptions. Use security reasoning. Cheat. Leverage lateral thinking to find creative ways to use or exploit a product. Finally, work to minimize the impact of inherent biases. Rely on security experts external to your development team for feedback and to perform security audits. Make sure security is done as a team effort to both use the group's collective mentality and to eliminate the impact of individual biases. These recommendations also happen to fit well into the open source community concept. The more people that are able to contribute to a security review, the better the result. By releasing your code as open source, you further facilitate quicker and more thorough security reviews. This is because individual biases can be more easily eliminated by leveraging the entire open source community and those with the security mentality can more quickly gain knowledge of your code as it's publicly accessible. This concludes the course on the security mentality. Now you should understand the primary developer biases that increase security risk. You should also have a better appreciation for the key knowledge and reasoning traits of the security mentality and be able to leverage them to more creatively approach problems. Thank you for listening.